not that's familiar crazy with you just shaved people. your head yeah. yeah he had a big well I, yeah i didn't just shave my head yeah. i had like 20 people shaving my head it was oh at, like gosh. a party like the vince like lombardi shaves his head thing all right take it away nate okay uh welcome back to all good in the brotherhood we are joined today by a special friend wait hold on is this probably picking me up yes it okay. is yeah we're joined by a very special friend vince lombardi uh the vince lombardi the vince lombardi not to be mistaken with the vince lombardi of football fame no this is the the vince lombardi of just of fame 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 <laughs> yes. itself yeah, I uh, Vince. Mm. We are also recording right now in Juneau, Alaska. That's pretty so cool. cool. It Completely is forgot cool. about that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we're up here uh, enjoying a like retreat, pilgrimage, fun adventure week sort of service that the, for like a day, um, and we're staying right now at the National Shrine of Saint Therese in Juneau, just pretty outside sick. of Juneau. So we've done some baller things. We won't spend a lot of time talking about that, but the reason why all three of us are here. Uh, together is Vince graduated from St. Vincent. Congratu- congratulations! Um, and this is a St. Vincent trip. And then Nate just got invited to bum out with us for the week. Exactly. So um, hardly that, bumming. We're doing some pretty true. fun activities, but, right. <laughs> but we are chilling. Yeah. Uh, and Nate and Vince did uh, meet actually uh, like a year and a half ago yeah. when we all also were on another trip uh, through, through St. Vincent. Yes, uh, in Rome. Yeah. So we we're on the footsteps of St. Benedict Retreat, which is basically this. Discernment retreat for the Benedictines in all the all the original Benedictine monasteries, um, and it was really cool getting to meet Vince there. But now we're getting to hang out a second time. So, heck yeah, bro! And so. I, I guess we're going to talk about Vince's uh, philosophy on life, which I'm not familiar with. So it's not necessarily philosophy. On, it's a philosophy of life, right? Okay. Like an yeah. aspect of philosophy. It's not his encompassing <laughs> philosophy of life. Okay, I'm, that's a few more years before. I'm it's there. a holistic, uh, all encompassing. Structure? No, it's not. No. no. Okay. Yeah. It's like an approach to a specific thing. Fair enough. Anyway, whatever this is, they've talked about it before. I haven't actually been exposed to it yet, so this is my first time hearing. Could, could you explain to me? Oh, first exposure. That like even makes it even better. <laughs> yes. I mean, I've heard Absolutely. you use the term pizza cake, um, which apparently that that's the the title or the yes. the proper term the for this philosophy of pizza cake. Okay, so could you explain to me the philosophy of pizza cake in a nutshell? Absolutely. Not in a nutshell. We're here for a long haul. Okay. That's true. This is Could good. you give me the entire... <laughs> uh, what is pizza cake? Where does it come from? All that jazz. Exactly. Yeah, I'll give you... We'll see which version of the pitch ends up coming out. But, um... Yeah, so hello, everyone. Uh, pizza cake is... As it might sound, a food. But it's more than a food. And not to be confused with a piece of cake, just to get that off the bat, because if you slur your words enough and people don't usually say pizza cake, so people are like, piece of cake? This is pizza cake. So pizza, as in the Italian food, plus cake. Absolutely. Yes. Is that hyphenated? Ideally chocolate cake, right? Ideally chocolate cake. That's the base form. So The base form? Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is base, also. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Pizza cake is basically originated one day, I guess we're about mm, three years ago at this point. Uh, I was going to dinner in the dining hall with some friends, and I come in with this plate of food. And there's a piece of pizza and a piece of cake on this plate. That's that's what you were eating, okay. Yeah. Well, they were on, yes, okay, go ahead. And they were, but they were kind of snuggling up against each other. And someone was like, are you going to eat pizza cake or something? And I said, you know what, I am. And I, and I stacked the piece of cake on top of the piece of you're pizza. You're kidding me. <laughs> That's disgusting. Mm, mm, wait, okay, wait. actually, <laughs> and then okay. One thing I picked up about Vince is you, you have pretty unique uh, taste in food. Um, so just just our quick side tangent. This morning you were eating uh, cinnamon toast crunch with OJ instead of milk. That's true. That's true. How was that? I love that. I've been doing that since high school when I would get the breakfast at school and we get the cinnamon toast crunch bar, which I think is better with orange juice than the actual regular cereal for whatever reason. Yeah. But yeah, and then and then Tim told me to put orange juice in the Cheez-Its after that, which I, I thought would crazy. taste horrible. Oh but... my gosh, you had it with the Cheez-Its? <laughs> yeah, Cheez-Its. I never thought of them like cereal before, but they that's actually, when, you, when they're in a bowl with liquid, they look like You don't Chex think about them cereal because they're not supposed to be thought of as cereal. They're, <laughs> they're cheese. They're made out of cheese. <laughs> Do people eat anything for cereal? Like, the variety of things that classify as cereal these days? They're all generally the sweet category. 
That's true. Cheese doesn't normally enter cereal bowls. <laughs> but go on, sorry. Listen, right. podcasts are your medium. Food is mine. Um, okay, fair enough. Hey, I appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. So, you're in the cafeteria. So, yeah, they're stuck in the face. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do this. And I-, I thought it was going to taste horrible. I just did it to mess with them because I love when people make a revolting face at me from time to time. Yeah. But, um, but I started eating it with a fork and knife. And to my surprise, I actually liked it. And so... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> From then on, throughout the rest of that semester, periodically I would get pizza cake again on my plate with full intentionality, mostly just to mess with people. But again, I had developed a taste for it. And was sorry, I have to yeah. ask: when you say you liked it, do you mean you were just able to choke it down without vomiting, or do you mean <laughs> the the pizza actually added to the cake, or the cake actually added to the pizza? Like, was it actually they, a good meal? Because I'm having a hard yeah. time imagining those flavors going together. That's an important question. Um, I think it helps when you start thinking about like the sweet and the salty and stuff like that. But okay. it's it's one of those. I don't. Mm, most of the time, I don't go. Oh, I'm craving pizza cake right now. Yeah. But it was certainly far so from like just choking it down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it was. I enjoyed it. Depending on the com- like which what pizza and what cake you're using, which yeah, the base level is plain pizza and chocolate cake. Okay. Um, depending on which you're using. I might enjoy it as much as pizza or cake on their own. Okay. Um, but <laughs> it's just that's so wild. Bizarre. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Um, so keep going. How, but yeah. How did this unfold then? So this happened, and it just I just kept eating pizza cake, and then the moment that really made me start thinking a little bit differently was this friend of mine said, "Okay, you've been doing this for a while. I got to try pizza cake myself." Hmm. Um, mm. And he goes for it, and it turns out he likes it too. Wow! And we were both surprised about this, <laughs> and and then from then on, I, I, he had a bit more of an adventuresome spirit in the dining hall, and I was just like, "This is really interesting." And it just, it was just a there's something a special moment when someone tries something new with you. I think mm, I yeah. imagine you can relate to that. Yeah. Um, and so from there, I had several more different experiences like that over the next year ish. That it really made me start. People reacted to this differently than a lot of other things in my life. You know, I'm always egging people on to do dumb or weird things, and yeah. and and often it, if it's just like begrudgingly do it or like yeah that was fun but I don't need to do that again or something. Mm-hmm. But but there was there was something different about this, and so pulled back from pizza cake for a moment. I guess at this time in my life, there are two really big ideas that started coming to my mind after working in a Christian summer camp a couple summers ago. Um, the one from that was um, trying to be radically open to God. Hmm. Um, my, my mission that I set for myself at that point is if something isn't sinful, I'm not going to say no to it. Never. I might say not right now, but I'm not going to say never. Yeah. Um, and if I'm going to say not right now, there's going to be a good reason for it. Okay. And it's not just going to be, well, I don't want to do that right now. Um at the same time, I started, before I really got into the pizza cake thing, I started thinking about this idea in my head that I called food discipleship, which is basically this idea. Food discipleship. Yeah. Okay. Uh, with um, learning transfer, that my hope is that if people are more open to new experiences in food, they'll be more open to new experiences in other areas of their lives, mm-hmm. um, ideally uh, in their faith. Um Real quick question. So for sure. you're you were a psych major, right? You, yeah. So you graduated, so I'm guessing some of these themes are related to that. What is learning transfer? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's a lot of psych things I'm trying to pull into this. And so much of this up until the past few months has been very um, anecdotal and things like that. But I'm increasingly reading research and trying to pull things mm-hmm. together as I'm working on these ideas. But um, learning transfer is basically the idea of you might learn something in one domain, but does that apply when you go somewhere else? It could be as simple as um, we're having this conversation in this room and I'm telling you about pizza cake. If we go out on the lake, will will you still remember everything I said and will it still make sense to you? Up to, right, am I, we're going to talk about the idea of openness and food and will that same idea make sense to you and will you be able to apply it when Mm -hmm. we talk about faith? Right. Um, That's really interesting because... I think it's very easy to kind of compartmentalize our lives where like you learn certain messages in one domain and then you don't try to find any uh, application of that in another domain. You just kind of like segment them. And But it's funny because I heard a comedian commenting on this one time, uh, the idea of learning transfer with, uh, he was talking about sports. So he was saying like, you know, when you're a kid 
and you play like little league baseball, one of the things they always say is like, you know, when they, when you're trying to like kind of market it to parents as a thing to get their kids involved in, they always say like, you know, it teaches teamwork, it, it lets the kids have fun, and it will teach them life lessons that they they will use later. Like we probably all heard that was yeah, some kind yeah, of yeah. kids sports yeah. program, and he's like, that's not actually true because. He said, "What? What if, like, years down the road, cause he he worked at some point. This comedian worked at a at a car rental company, and he's saying, what if years down the road, you know, I, I took one of our really expensive cars off the lot, took it for a crazy spin, and got it like got maybe in an accident, no, but he had a good time. He's like, well, guess what? The lesson I learned in in Le- Little League that they always say like games is like it's not about like the outcome. It's that it's important. What's important is that you had a good time. Like that's one <laughs> of the lessons you learned in Little League. And he's saying like clearly the learning transfer from that life lesson in Little League." doesn't translate to, you know, years down the road. He, he was being funny. The way he presented it was very funny. But the point being, like, it, it seems sometimes like certain lessons we learn in one domain don't transfer very easily to a different domain. Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's one of the bigger challenges I face is we'll get into more about what I'm doing with this now. But, um, but right, how do we get people to do that? Because I think you know, the goal of a person living a full and complete life would be in a lot of respects to unify the different areas of their life and it's not Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. oh i'm this person when i'm here and i'm this person there it's like no Mm -hmm. i'm i love all of these things no matter where i go and i i I present a consistent disposition and and Mm -hmm. uh, tendency toward virtues and different things like that wherever Mm -hmm. i go and it's not you know a lot of that i think is tearing off different masks that we put on and also just being intentional people don't some people are you know deliberately separating parts of their lives but some people are just very unintentional and yeah. so i think is that bringing in you know we're climbing that mountain today um total oh, blast yeah. by the way yeah yeah um we went on a hike today that at some points just felt like a uphill or not just an uphill like an actual rock climbing because it was the the incline was very steep just for for our listeners yeah, <laughs> yeah. it was yeah, it was brutal listeners. i expected it to be like when they said we were going to go on a hike i thought it was going to be chill that was not chill. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was a sl- uh, slightly undersold. Um, I was joking with John Paul, who I was hiking with, um, and I was like, "Yeah." When Father Max was like, "Oh, you'll just go on a nice hike today," uh, I was like, "Yeah." I think I realized that, like, in, with his experience of only going part of the way, it is a nice hike. But if you get a little farther than that, it starts going. When up. you actually hit the slope, that's yeah. when it becomes not. But so it was nice. great. It was so cool being up there. It was epic. And then running down, it I was ran gorgeous. down. <laughs> I ran down by myself. No, just kidding. Uh, like I almost ate it several times. Yeah. Um, but it was. It was you were going on the blessed. path, right? Yes. Yeah. We went off the path on our way downhill, and so we were just kind of slipping and sliding down the the, the mountainside. It was awesome. But <laughs> hey, it's a crazy experience. You got to try, right? Exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So with the pizza cake idea, yeah. is it kind of? I'm, I'm getting the sense. Is it kind of just a mentality of openness to new experiences? That's part of it. Okay. That's part of it. So, yeah. I'll lay it out like this. So, I'm work. I have this idea that I do want to start bringing into intentional discipleship with this. Um, that I'm, I'm going to write out some stages and try practicing them on people and doing some research. Especially, um, just because people are start out at different places and what they're mm-hmm. able to do and able to learn and how they can grow and stuff. And, right. Um, but I, I think at the lowest level of pizza cake is... Okay, our goal is to get someone to such a place that maybe you invite them to a dinner party and they're a better guest and they're going to actually eat everything on their plate and stuff like yeah. that. Right. right. Hmm. Um, but I think the highest level goes all the way up to complete and radical openness to God's will. And I'll, more on that in a moment. But because um, really what it's about, the pizza cake whole ideas uh, center in on this thing that I call the pizza cake moment. The pizza cake moment. Yeah. Okay. Which is the moment in which you're presented by with something uncomfortable, and you make a certain choice about it. Um, I'm distinguishing these into two different things: the the positive pizza cake moment, the negative pizza cake moment. In the sense, is a I guess it's a more of a philosophical sense, like presence or absence. Um, a posi- oh, not necessarily good or bad. Just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Okay. A positive pizza cake moment would be when you're faced with something uncomfortable. Maybe it's filming this podcast. I've never been on a podcast before, um, and I choose to do it anyway. Well, low pressure, because you went to St. <laughs> Vincent, and probably most of our listeners are from St. Vincent, so you're already friends with all the audience, but keep, keep going, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, and so, but choosing to do it anyway would be a positive pizza cake moment. Right. 
Um, and then on the other hand, there's a negative pizza cake moment where maybe the uncomfortable thing you're faced with is someone expecting you to lie. Mm. And so, and they obviously you want to say no to that. Right. And, um, and so that would be a negative pizza cake Oh, you're moment. saying negative in the sense that you, the, the uncomfortable thing that you need to do is refrain from some activity. Yes. Yeah, yeah yes. okay. Um, and so this idea of the pizza cake moment I think is essential to all of this because it's the, it's that practical application and not just talking about all these random things of, oh, I'm going to learn and I'm going to do something new. And so it's really all about what's uncomfortable. This started out as this idea of me saying, if something is uncomfortable but not sinful, I'm going to do it. I love that, by the way. Thank you. Um, and because I think we just, we're such small people mm -hmm. in so many ways. And there's mm -hmm. really good ways to be small, right? I mean, we're here at the Shrine of St. Therese yeah. talking about that sense yeah. of smallness. Mm -hmm. But this is not St. Therese's kind of smallness that I'm talking about. I'm talking about the smallness insofar as the potential that we have versus yeah. where our actuality is. Right. And how little of who we're called to be that we're living into. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I'm just so frustrated and fired up by that on a daily basis, yeah. I think. Um, hey, real quick, have you heard of the vice of pusillanimity? It's a very wordy... I believe word. Aristotle talks about that. He huh? does. But please refresh me. Well, so, uh, in contrast to it, there's the virtue of magnanimity, which just basically means great soulness. So it's having like a, a big soul, like kind of a big spirit that's, uh, you know, ordered towards doing great things. And then there's, um, it, it's kind of hard to say quickly, pusillanimity, which just means small souledness, which I think is kind of along the lines of what you're getting at, which is this spirit that's closed in on itself. It doesn't strive to have new experiences or achieve great things or seek out great virtue. It's just kind of content to resign itself to mediocrity, right? Yeah. I, I think our culture is fixated on mediocrity, almost like it's like we, we've become enslaved to it. So. I, I would even say in some ways, I don't know about fixated, just numb to anything beyond mediocrity. Yeah. Um, that, that, that we're not, uh, at least in a lot of things, we're not invited to like to, to do great things. It's almost like we're invited to like, oh, see this great thing, watch this great thing, have this great thing on your phone. Yeah. Um, we take in great content, yeah, but we but don't do that. Don't them. do it. Or yeah. like there's so many people, you know, like streamers on like Twitch, YouTube, all uh, TikTok, all these things like... Let's watch someone else have the experience for us. That's true. Instead of actually maybe the going through the uncomfortable like stages needed to do that. Or admit, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, maybe I'll grow to figure it out. Right. Um, right. Yeah, that, uh, but it's it doesn't, like, doing hard things or doing new things, um, I, I, I would even, like, yeah, enslaved maybe is the word, but I just think just, like, We've lost the creativity to even think about doing it. Yeah, you're right. Um, I think that's right. So yeah. absolutely, that's that's a really big thing for me. I was um, just looking at something I wrote a while ago that I kind of forgot about this. But yeah, that that um, one of the core ideas in this is that piece of cake is a, a movement of freedom. Hmm. Um, freedom in that sense. I think you talked about this on an episode not too long ago. But that um, to to do what you ought to. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think we're so often, like you're saying, maybe even just blind to it because. Um, we're so busy just doing whatever we're doing, trying to fit in or something like that, yeah. where pizza cake and, and I, I said a hint to you before the episode about absurdity, but that's an area where I think it's really fun to just practice mm -hmm. engaging discomfort. Um, whether that's, you know, a little over a year ago, I was completely bald, um, because one, I just kind of got it stuck in my head a few years ago and really want to know what it was like. But on the other hand, it not That's crazy. You just people. shaved your head? Yeah. yeah. He had a big... Well, like, I, yeah, I didn't just shave my head. Yeah. I had like 20 people shaving my head. It was oh at like gosh. a party. Like the Vince like Lombardi shaves his head thing. Are you it, serious? Yeah, yeah. The, the, Vince is I, The things that he gets people excited about are just like unreal to me. He's truly influential. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yes, but it was a big symbol in my head and all these people are like, why'd you do that? And that's like, well, it was uncomfortable, and so I wanted to do it. And I think you should think about something similar in your own life. Because, um, yeah, I was very self-conscious about it at first, and just like, what the heck? I, right. And new things to navigate. I knew I had a mole on my head right here, and I was like, I don't know how big it is. Is that going to look really weird? Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's a great question. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's insane. As somebody with, like, you have, you have a good head of curly hair now, it's like, I'm trying to just imagine you bald. It's like, that, that's a very, like, self-exposing kind of act. But, um, 
but it, it's just interesting that you decided to go to you seek it out specifically because the thought made you uncomfortable. Yes, that yeah. was the when I realized how uncomfortable I was. That was the moment when I knew I needed to do it. Right, and that was a moment of freedom. You're saying because it was kind of just breaking out of like the the kind of the enslavement of just doing like your normal routine or like what just kind of the normal set of things that you would do. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was imposing. I mean, it's all right. Like again, obedience is wonderful, and that's something we talk about a lot and. In, in tradition, go back to their tradition episode, by the way. Uh, um, thank you. Shameless plug from one of our <laughs> members. Let's get guests. Let's go. Did he listen to our podcast? This is wild. It's like one of what? seven people. He is a stan. <laughs> <laughs> this is funny. Sorry, we were talking yesterday, and, and uh, our podcast came up at one point. We were with a group of people here on the retreat we're on, and, and I guess most of them listened to it. And somebody asked a question about our podcast. I didn't know the answer to it, but, but he did. <laughs> Uh, I just thought it was so funny. He like knew the exact episode number we're currently on and stuff like that. It's just it's, it's a wild. But, so thank you for your thank you for your faith. Yeah, Vince like periodically because I like most of the times when I submit like the episode like descriptions and like upload the episodes, it's like ten thirty or eleven o'clock at night, and I'm just like trying to like grind it out just so that there's content up when midnight strikes, and um, he will f- like proofread our little descriptions or like little things in text back to be like hey, this is spelled wrong, or, like, check this. And it's so helpful. It's so helpful it because is. other people would just be like, oh, wow, like, so Francisco doesn't know how to spell. Right. But Vince is like, yep, here we go. And, it's, yeah, it's just, I appreciate it. Um, but While we're shouting out episodes, go listen to the Strengths Finder episodes. That's my input in restorative themes at work. Oh, mm. yeah. Oh, dude, there you go. Absolutely. Wow, cross I love bringing in strengths in, yeah. like, literally every conversation. People, yeah. We know this, yeah. but... Also, you, if you want more of me, they shouted me out in that first episode. We did, yeah. But, oh, yeah, we did, didn't we? The Vince Lombardi, we did, yes. <laughs> that's great. I don't think I, I knew you at that point. That's insane. So, I think it was so. right after on trip, regardless. Regardless, um, yeah. Yeah, so... Sorry, where were you? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. you were talking about... Uh, Susan Gold. Yeah, I, um, just like to, yeah, to respond to that idea of like just knowing how much the idea made you just uncomfortable, and then you leaned into it anyways... The, the idea of freedom that connects with it that I wanted to talk about was just like then like the effect afterwards like you realize you're okay um, more of that discomfort was totally in your head and not really at all in a sense connected to reality maybe a couple people judged you or like wow why does Vince look like that but it didn't change anything about you mm-hmm. um, and then you realize like no I there's so much more growth here than there would be if I just, you know, sat on the sidelines and decided not to do this. Mm-hmm. And the freedom that we experience there definitely can translate into the spiritual life. Because there are so many things in the spiritual life that are uncomfortable and yeah. that people look at and be like, you're freaking weird, dude. Like, right. why would you do that? The idea of, you know, Jesus freak. Yeah. 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 Like, that. that's, I, in a sense, I feel like that's almost what this is. Like, yeah. like the pizza cake is like Jesus freak, you know? Right. Um, and, and it's, like, the saints, most people thought they looked insane. Yeah. Um, and that's what love of Jesus should really bring us to, is a yeah. point that almost looks insane. Right. Um, and, and I see that strong connection here. And, like, I remember when you told me, like, I, I just, I can't get it out of my head. I'm, I'm going bald. I'm like, Vince, that's insane. <laughs> that's um, and you're like, I know. That's why I'm doing it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. Um, you actually looked, I thought, a lot better than I was expecting. Me too. I, but, yeah, and that's the crazy thing we were saying about it, too, about okay, what happened afterward? Well, now I no longer, you know, I've been bought. I've been there. I don't feel the need to do it anymore, which that's cool, but our life's about a lot more than relieving urges. Mm -hmm. Um, But... Yeah. (laughs) But it's... um, I... Now it's like, if there's a reason I need to shave bald, that's not a barrier anymore i've been there i've done it i don't feel a need to do it anymore but i'm willing to if the time arises Mm -hmm. and that's powerful and i think that's because people ask me a lot actually these days are you ever going to go bald again and i i'm like if a situation calls for it good i have this weird fantasy of of (laughs) me in like 10 or 15 years mentoring this younger guy and he's struggling with something and for some reason i'm like we both gotta go bald together, but mm. that's just some. <laughs> I don't even need that's to wild, expand on that. But, but yeah, <laughs> I sorry, real quick. I just love the idea that you said. I mean, just I guess this is kind of the general theme, which is you said um, if it's not sinful, then you should feel open to trying it out. Right. Which I, I kind of love because it's, it's with the particular like going bald thing. There's so many things like that. Uh, going like shaving your head. 
um, like dressing in some unique way, trying unique foods, just doing things that people might label as weird, that like, there's almost like a, what do you call it? Like, uh, what's like a, a rule for what's socially acceptable. And uh, so much so, and it's so kind of strongly enforced in some kind of communities of, or, or even friend groups that like, if somebody does something out of the ordinary or like does something maybe unattractive, like shaving their head, people are like, oh, you can't do that. Like, no, why would you ever do that? Like, it's like absolutely like almost like a universal law. You don't do that. And yet, if you look at it, you're like, it doesn't go against the true moral law. Like, it's not sinful in any way. Um, in fact, in this case, it might be an opportunity for humility. It might help you grow in virtue. So it's like, it, if it, it, it almost makes you want to question, if, if something's not sinful, then uh, why do we take so seriously all these kind of uh, socially imposed laws about that you can or can't do them, right? Like with that, like, like yeah. sh- shaving. Like a lot of people, if they look at a guy who just shaved his head, they're like, oh, that was crazy. That was a terrible thing for him to do. It's like, well, it's not morally bad. So, so why do you feel so strongly that it's out of the question as, as a life decision? I think other people being willing to be uncomfortable also makes people uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because they know then that like, oh, makes that aware. person has more grit than I do. Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. Um, mm. And like being, or you know, like being embarrassed for on someone else's behalf. Oh, yeah. Uh, Secondhand like, oh, embarrassment. Yeah, it's like, oh, like what? Like, oh, I, I feel cringy. I feel creepy. Like, uh, but that person doesn't seem to care. They, they should just, care. Yeah. Oh, instead of making me feel bad, I'll just tell them they shouldn't do it. Yeah. I mean, I just felt a little bit uncomfortable when I heard you say you decided to shave your head because <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I, I've thought oh, about Oh, bro, that. you shave your head? Yeah. I, I've thought about like, what if I shave I my head? I would never see and that. And I, I, I would hate that. I, I couldn't stand to do that. I'm um, just because I have like I have way too much hair right now, but like and you like it too much. <laughs> no, I, maybe I don't know. But um, the the point is is like that that's just really admirable. But it, but it, I'm seeing what Francisco says that like when when other people are aren't afraid to do things that are uncomfortable, it makes the rest of society feel uncomfortable for them. But sorry, we're we're getting we're getting yeah. off from your focus though. I, no, I wanna, that's I want to really hear cool. more, Vince. You're you're sure. you're the pizza cake philosopher. <laughs> yes. Along the lines of what you were saying, I had this experience with someone recently. It was crazy. We were at a um, a prison retreat. Yeah. I'd never done anything like that before. Um, I was just there to... Um, um, they had a closing ceremony that they invited people from the community to come to participate in, and I guess it means a lot to the um, residents there and stuff, And um, which was really cool. I've been wanting to... I've been interested in something like that for years, and this is my first time getting into it but anyway you go through security and we had to sit in this room for like an hour and a half yeah and i met this woman and i didn't know her at all really the only sense in which i knew her before this was that she's the wife of a family friend um that they're newly remarried and such um and so this is for all intents and purposes my first encounter with someone but she's i started going off on this pizza cake thing to her there and it was so much fun yeah um that's wild and it was another evidence, too, of how catchy this idea is and part of why I like it, because I'll come right back to where I just started and why I brought that up. But but something I really like about the pizza cake idea and why I call it pizza cake is that, one, it's kind of fun to say. Yeah, There's a is. certain catchiness to it. And it's one of those, I think it's a really good entrance point to start talking about uncomfortable, because for most people, when they first hear it, it's really uncomfortable thing at first. Ugh, that sounds horrible. Or, what are you talking about? And, and then it's a point to say, was this and it wasn't so bad and it's just food and people can easily forget about it if they want but then you can escalate things past there and talk about more challenging ideas from there right and i think using phrases like pizza cake i just had a pizza cake moment Mm, or something mm -hmm. like that gives us a language with which to talk about our experiences Mm -hmm. back to this woman that i met yeah she told me she was basically talking about when we have bad emotions that we have and stuff and saying that there are plenty of times when you should not be hiding those from other people and that the point of you having those might be just so that other people around you are uncomfortable mm-hmm. and i was like "Ooh, that's that's really interesting that's hardcore yeah um and so that's really starting to meld into these kinds of ideas mm-hmm. um but yeah i think the whole idea when you're presented with an opportunity for a pizza cake moment um the really big thing that i want to encourage is thoughtfulness thinking about why am I doing this because I, I don't want you, people to just be like oh I'm uncomfortable I'm plunging in I want people to be like I'm uncomfortable why am I uncomfortable right now mm. and to think about that and if you can't come to a reason why you're uncomfortable you still you shouldn't do what you're uncomfortable about because there might be genuinely something wrong with it and you just haven't rooted it out mm-hmm. or maybe there's just you might hurt someone and don't realize it for example you were just talking about um, 
cultural norms and group expectations and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I think there are a lot of circumstances in which, yes, there's no reason not to buck these things, mm-hmm. if only just to have some fun or something like that. But, or they might even be corrupt, etc. But, um, but there's also those times when um, you might mess something up because you, for lack of ignorance or, or presence of ignorance or something like right. that. I had this really silly moment. I keep talking about food because, again, I love... <laughs> Food's a big part of everyone's lives, yeah. but I don't know. It's a special thing for me. Right. But um, I was at this conference at Notre Dame University um, a couple years ago, and we were in their big dining hall, and there's all these people, and they're walking around serving wine to people while we're eating and stuff like that. And there's this dude who was a St. Vincent graduate, uh, probably about 10 years older than me or something. He was sitting next to me. I had just met him at this meal. And, and I was drinking some wine, and I looked over the person to my left. I just had this silly idea in my head, and I was like, hey, what if I just pour the rest of my coffee in this wine? And <laughs> uh, What? Are you kidding me? And, yeah, because like, I, I wanted to mess with the guy next to me. You didn't know this guy? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. Um, and so what did he say? That is the funny part. So she was like, yeah, do it. <laughs> so, Whoa. so then I poured the coffee into the wine, Right while I was, I was making eye contact with him while I did it, I can see that. Yeah, and I just started mm-hmm. drinking it, and no reaction at all. I think he didn't notice, or maybe he just did a really good That's job insane. keeping a straight face, or maybe he secretly does that himself. <laughs> That's why that would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but my point in bringing that up is that I had to analyze things for a moment before I even suggested it to the person next to me, and um, I understand the norm that coffee and wine is not something that you mix. Right. and understand how he might react to me doing something like that. Mm-hmm. Where if I have no idea, maybe if I go into, I don't know, a very foreign culture from my own, for example, I'm not just going to do start mixing things together and stuff sure. because yeah, I want to be respect offensive. the traditions and what's going on there. Yeah. yeah. And, what's, and so I think that's another very just simple way of understanding all of this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, so again, going up to the other extreme of, okay, now we're way past food and we're talking about all these experiences across our lives. Complete and radical openness to God, you know? I don't know when I might be asked to shave my head, right? I don't know when I, God might ask me to sacrifice my son. Mm. Whoa. Do you think that was a pizza cake moment? <laughs> you mean for Abraham? <laughs> yeah. We just, like, shifted That's crazy. so hard. Okay, I'm <laughs> just thinking about Kierkegaard now. Right, exactly. Yeah. I love that passage. That's remarkable. Um. Yeah, I... I love Kierkegaard. Anyway, um, wow. Yeah, well, with because with Kierkegaard, right, it's like that. There's that whole idea that there's you and the decisions that you can make, and then there's the the absolute, the moral absolute, which is God. And then in between, we normally we mediate our decisions between our relationship between us and God through through kind of these universal laws and these kind of like this is how you do things. These almost group expectations. But but as he says, like you know, if if the moral absolute, if God asks you to do something it trumps all of that. it trumps all of it you you no longer mediate it through some law you just uh radically conform yourself to the absolute and so it sounds a little bit like an extreme case of pizza cake is, is the example of abraham and isaac where the, he abraham i mean for all intents and purposes thought he was gonna have to kill his son mm-hmm. and yet he radically conformed to that command just because uh well maybe partly because it made him uncomfortable and that, that was the proof that it was a great sacrifice but also because that's just what he felt demanded of him. I think that's crazy, though, that what you're talking about is almost a small-scale version of that. Yeah. Like you see a connection there between, yeah. Absolutely. Shaving your head and, and sacrificing <laughs> Isaac. That's, 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 <laughs> right. that's they're, wild. They're a little wow. bit different. But, <laughs> but, yeah, but, like, so that's where I want to walk with people and build them all the way up to this point. Yeah. And, and it's all it starts out in all these little things, you know. Maybe I'm really uncomfortable with hugging people, but um, I'm going to hug you when I see you. And... And maybe that'll be, I'll be ready to hug you when I, not just an option, but maybe when it's really important. Mm-hmm. Maybe you're really grieving, and the best thing that I can give you right now after a prayer is a hug. Right. Mm-hmm. And if I haven't been practicing hugging you, I really might not be ready for that. Yeah. And it, I might make it weird and make things about me or something like that sure. because I'm so focused on, uh, well, I guess I hug you right now. Yeah. Um, and so it's just all these things like that. I think I'm going to open up. Passage from John. Um, I can hold your mic for a second if you need. Thank you. I think something that really um, 
a verse that embodies max level pizza cake. Is, <laughs> max level. <laughs> max level unlocked. <laughs> is uh, John uh, twelve twenty seven. This is um, Jesus in Gethsemane. Um, or sorry, this is not in Gethsemane. Yes, it is. Um, he's talking about his death. And he says, Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Mm. And I think that's at the end of the road for all of us, hopefully, that um, this path of embracing this comfort and all this stuff shout out another podcast episode comes to embracing suffering and that that's ultimately what this is all about and yeah mm. there's few things more uncomfortable than suffering dude yeah that's crazy yeah and i and in a way um like so right i came not to do my own will but the will of the one who sent me um it, in, in a way it seems like your your idea of pizza cake and these pizza cake moments and then leading people to like stronger and stronger ascent um, to the will of God and radical openness is really a, a transformation of the will, um, uh, the will of like a, a self will, um, and and only choosing that which fulfills me, that which I enjoy, or that which you know I am comfortable with doing, uh, to a, a doing truly the will of God, right. um, which you know, and I was talking about this yesterday, but often comes with no explanation. Um, and, and no reason necessarily for the things that God asks us to do. Mm-hmm. But if our will is not trained to just do the uncomfortable without necessarily having a fantastic reason behind it, because mm-hmm. if we give if we give ourselves, I think, a strong enough reason to do something uncomfortable, it makes it slightly easier. Yeah. <laughs> um, but if we can't, if we don't have the absolute explanation for it, other than like I think I need to lean into the uncomfortability, lean into the suffering. If we can grow into that, then like. I came here for this hour like that then reaching our goal is yeah. I came here for my cross like and that that's why embracing the cross or embracing whatever we have been asked to do is clearly the most uncomfortable thing we're going to do yeah whatever cross we have been given is absolutely by definition the, most the cross is the thing that causes you discomfort right? yes exactly it's subjective so in a way your philosophy pizza cake is like how to get people to understand that carrying their cross is in fact the, the way and only way to to reach like a true open relationship with God yeah yes and I love that it's a sort of seamless transition between applying that idea of being adventure uh, being like uh, adventurous with you know small things it could be like just trying out foods mm-hmm. like pizza cake that sound weird or trying shaving your head um, how that transitions seamlessly into following God like I think that that's what's really cool about this philosophy is that it's not like a hard and fast compartmentalized lifestyle where you're like, oh yeah, over here I'm going to be adventurous with my eating habits and then over here I'm not going to be adventurous with my conformity to God's will. But it's like the one leads into the other. And it's just the idea that you've been describing kind of reminds me of um, when I was working at a summer camp last year and uh, they had th- this kind of message that they shared with us as counselors about how we should approach uh working with the kids that we, we had. We were working with the kids between like the ages of like elementary school and high school. And when we were doing outdoor activities with them, they said, uh, we, we want to encourage kids to live in what they called their stretch zones. So they identified kind of three zones that a person can feel when they're doing an activity. One is just your comfort zone, like the things you're totally comfortable doing, you would do with, with anybody you do it by yourself. It's just your, kind of your normal life. Um, then the other extreme, there's what they call the panic zone, which is that that's the things that just make you freak out uh, you, you have absolutely no, no sense of comfort there, um, and, and you, you, you kind of just want to disengage. But they said in between there, there's what you call your stretch zone, which you still have some comfort in it, right? So it's, it's not totally in your panic zone, but it, it pushes you a little bit outside your comfort zone in such a way that you're able to grow without doing damage to yourself. So like just a cl- like concrete example would be if we were doing rock climbing with the kids. Say there's a kid who um, he's totally comfortable climbing up uh, 10 or 12 feet, like you know when when he's rock climbing. Well, that 10 or 12 feet then is his comfort zone. Now, say he's totally freaked out or would like just lose his mind if he was 100 feet off the ground. Well, then 100 feet that's his panic zone. But maybe in between there, where you can find some happy medium, like maybe 40 or 50 feet, 
where he's being pushed outside of his comfort zone. So he's growing, he's, he's learning to persevere, he's learning some virtues, but he's not going so far as to be in his panic zone. And I, I just think that that's like, that's kind of maybe along the lines of what you're describing, which is like, you should push yourself beyond what's comfortable, not like just uh, willy nilly kind of just do crazy things just f- like without any sense of prudence, but you should expand your the realm of what you're comfortable with. And, and that way it leads into expanding your virtue, right? 100%, yeah. My hope is that people doing this kind of thing, maybe they continue to have fun with food things right. long past mm-hmm. it being uncomfortable. Yeah. But my hope is that you quickly, all right, food's not a big deal for me anymore. Right. What else is uncomfortable and keep yeah. going? And, and just to be, I've been talking about food so much, and again, it's very easy and accessible, and we all experience it every day. But something else we experience every day is prayer, right? Mm-hmm. How many times am I... Oh, I'm mean, I'm so tired right now. I want to go to bed. No, you still have to pray right now. Yeah. Or, um, I'm really uncomfortable sharing this with God right now because I don't want to think about the implications of what just happened to me or mm-hmm. or how I've been treating my relationship with God lately and stuff right. like mm-hmm. that. Um, the two relationships, whether it's asking someone out, talking about think so many. I I think pizza hit philosophy is so helpful especially in like committed romantic relationships and stuff like that because so many times i i see so many marriages and stuff where people just don't talk about things and and just have this culture within of just of sweeping things under the rug yeah it would be uncomfortable to address them yeah Yeah, there's so much avoidance behavior that we just almost just yeah that's acceptable in our culture Mm -hmm. and stuff um and then pizza cake says no. Like, <laughs> yeah. Let's, no, sir. <laughs> let's bring this to the forefront. Mm. You have to do it in a charitable way, of course. But right. but what's going on here? Exactly. Um, and it seems like in those kind of situations, the very fact that it causes you discomfort is probably a hint that it's something you should be seeking out. Right? Yes. Yes. Um, I think. I think the goal for the 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 mature pizza caker is. <laughs> Is to um, pizza kicked up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is to um, to to be in a place where you don't let uncomfortable things just go past you. Maybe you don't yeah. deal with it right then, but I'm gonna write this down for later, mm-hmm. or or this is a good item for prayer today. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and as as we kind of wrap up here, just uh, something I want to speak into, just like for you, Vince, like personally. Uh, um, being able, like having the joy of being able to see Vince working in campus ministry, seeing Vince all of his four years of college and, and to his graduation, um, like there is like a clear change in who you are in that sense. Like your openness in all of these other experiences has for you translated also to your experience of prayer. Just I, how I've, and we have lots of good conversations, um, but even as I've seen you talk with other people or just kind of been a fly on the wall or like hear you talking to other people in the background just the way you've been able to describe your like ongoing growth and relationship with christ and the things that you enter into prayer or the experiences you've been willing to do or that you brought other people into um just kind of shows to me that um you're not resting in in that like i am okay here like this is good enough um and, and actually that's something in the catechism it talks about like it would be good enough if for as far as jesus his redemption like it'd be good enough if you know, he healed you know, all those people and gave them an example of like loving mercy. It would be good enough if he taught us a new moral law. Um, it would be good enough if so many different things, but none of that was good enough for him. Like the cross was was what was the final or above end. and beyond. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I, I just I see that like your growth in these last four years is like this. Like this is good, but it's not good enough. I keep on going. So mm-hmm. I'm very encouraged, I'm very excited for Vince to go into uh, his next phase into the world because uh, I think they're quite ready for Pizza Cake uh, to come take its wave and storm, but it's going to be fantastic. The Vince Lombardi people is coming. The Vince Lombardi prophet of Pizza Cake. What, <laughs> what's so cool to me about this philosophy of Pizza Cake is that it seems to foster a spirit of boldness. Mm-hmm. And it, it seems like just that that confidence that you're describing of just being like, I feel uncomfortable with this, with this. Instead of running from it, I'm just going to run towards it and embrace it. Like that's so good for boosting uh, confidence and boosting uh, personal courage. And yeah, I, th- I think courage. that's what especially men need nowadays mm-hmm. is just to we, we get so comfortable and so lax and we get very habituated to running from discomfort. 
But if you can like, yeah, if we if we can all just be a little bit more pizza kicked up, and and sorry, and recognize that we should we should run towards those opportunities for discomfort, like you were saying, like it, it turns us more into people like Vince Vince, Vince Lombardi. I, I mean, I I haven't gotten to be around you as much as Francisco has, but like you just seem like someone who's full of life because you're bold. Like you just do stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and it makes your life more interesting. It makes it more interesting for everybody else. That like, is Whenever I hear about facts. stuff you do, I'm like, that's crazy. Facts. That's so weird, but that's so cool. That is so true. <laughs> I, I when Once we finally get, like, our, like, merch line and T-shirt line off the ground, I would love if you let Pizza Cake get, like, its own, like, brand T-shirt. Just, like, either a, a slice of pizza with a cake on top and no, nothing else, or just, like, um, like, have you tried Pizza Cake? Just, like, that question. Yeah. And people are like, what does that even mean? Um, yeah, that could be so cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or just like a pizza caked up, like something like that, <laughs> or like push this button and it has like a little green for like a pizza cake experience. It's like okay, whoop, and you're like, let's go. Allow me to share with you. All right, let's. All right, we're gonna shave your head. <laughs> what? Oh, that's wild. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, dude, I appreciate you so much for being here. For yeah, uh, sharing your. Like philosophy and, and your growth with us. Um, I, don't know, I appreciate you explaining pizza cake to me because I've heard about <laughs> this this mysterious pizza cake for a long time. So that's fire. Yeah, I you guys it. are such a gift to me. Thank you. Oh, oh of course. So for all of you uh, who are listening and watching, if you're like, what? That sounds crazy. I should do that. Go and do it and share in the comments below what your pizza cake experience is or what you're, something you're uncomfortable with uh, that you're like, going to try and, and break through that discomfort. And and what that pizza cake moment was like, I think that would be great just to, to hear some of that. Exactly. I was gonna say the same exact thing. Oh, dude. let's freaking go, or dude! Drop, yeah. Everyone yes. just drop a comment if you try pizza cake. Yeah, like, I'm genuinely. I'm yeah, not a thumbs I'm, a thumbs up for everyone who's tried pizza cake. If you're ne- gonna try it. That's I love that. That's yeah. we'll do that. Okay, and that's the next possible opportunity. I'm we were so close. I told to Vince. I told cake. Pence. Uh, Vince. Pence. What? It, what? <laughs> I told Vince I would really What's like yeah. to try. Having pizza cake on this episode have it you, just didn't. Oh, work. that would have been awesome. Um, we yeah. had like a platter brought in while we were in the middle. Have you tried it? I have not actually. It's, okay, but I have to do it with him. I have to do it with him. So you know we what? have some days left. We'll have, we're gonna have like DoorDash a two minute pizza and DoorDash some uh, <laughs> some cake. We're gonna have a two minute segment video of just us rating pizza cake. Yeah, that'd be so good. Let's do it. Let's do it. We can all like take a bite at once and like you can get our honest reactions. I agree. Let's do we it. had pizza today. We should have brought. Anyways, anyways. Okay. Thank you all for joining. Uh, this has been All Good in the Brotherhood with Brother Francisco, Nate Whitaker, and yeah. the one and only Vince Labardi, founder and uh, trademark owner of Pizza Cake Philosophy. Patent pending. Yes. Go um, eat some pizza cake. Exactly. Peace. Thanks Until so much, then, friends. Adios.